Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial to teach you how to undervolt your AMD graphics card. So this will be only on the RX 570 and 580 since those are the ones I have, but the procedure should work on RX 470, 480 or the RX Vega graphics cards. I mean the procedure is exactly the same, but the numbers won't be the same, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Before starting, anything that you do to your GPU is under your full responsibility. So with that out of the way, let's start with the undervolting. First of all, as you can see here, I'm into the AMD Radeon settings. To enter that, just right click on the desktop, AMD Radeon settings, and it will be there. I just put it on full screen so it's easier to show. We go into gaming, global settings, this button here, then global Watman. There will be a warning before, just accept it. And in here, as you can see, we got the frequency, the voltage control of the GPU, the fan and temperature, and the memory. We're going to just center ourselves in the voltage here on the GPU. As you can see, the frequency it achieves is 1365 MHz. This is the RX 580 from XFX, the GTS OC Plus Edition. So some people told me those run very hot, and they do. The Sapphire cards apparently run better. But anyways, I had to. I wanted to lower the temperatures, so I lowered the voltage. In order to lower the voltage, you have to center on state 7. This is the one I edit all the time. This is when you're gaming, what it's being used. So by default, we have 1150 millivolts. Uh, what you want to do here is to start lowering it like by... I don't know, intervals of 30 or 40, you'll see. So let's do 30 less, let's do 1120. So once you change this value, you lower the voltage for 1150 millivolts to 1120. So we go up here and put apply. And once you apply that, you want to test it. So to test it, I'm going to minimize this and go into superposition in order to test our GPU. And we're going to select 4K optimized, so it pushes this GPU as much as possible. So we go back here, we run it. And once this runs, if it crashes, it means it's not stable. If you see artifacts, artifacts, sorry. So yeah, when you want to, this to be, it's a perfectly stable benchmark. It might be a very low frame rate, but that doesn't matter. We, what we want is 99% GPU usage. And the, and the benchmark not crashing or getting artifacts. Artifacts are errors in the graphics. As you can see, right now, everything is looking pretty good so far. I already did this, but once this benchmark finishes, if it finishes correctly, it should be fine. You can lower it further. So I'm going to just skip this. It's a very cool benchmark. I recommend you use it. Okay, so once it's over, it will tell you a score and all that kind of stuff. If it passed, it passed. So once it passed, you can lower it further. Instead of 1120, try 1090. And again, 1090 is 30 less. We go back, we apply it. And again, we go back into superposition and we run it. So after that, if it passes, you, run it another, you lower it another 30 and you make another run and another run with lower voltage numbers until it crashes, pretty much. If it crashes, use the latest stable value. In my case, for some reason, my stable value was 1000. So from 1150 by default to 1000. So we apply that. As you can see, it's applied. And we run superposition again. But yeah, this is for my specific GPU. This is the number that was stable for other GPUs. Maybe you have the same RX 580, maybe it's 1050 on another one, maybe it's higher. You have to test it out. That's the procedure. You lower it little by little until you get a stable number. I mean, when this crashes. And once you get to a stable number, the latest stable number, start trying games. This isn't usually perfect. Sometimes games crash, but not the benchmark. Sometimes it's the other way around. So my recommendation there is that you try, after you finish testing with this benchmark, start testing your favorite games. But yeah, what does, 
since we have a lower voltage, <laughs> better said, you get lower power usage, you get lower temperatures since there's less power going through the GPU. And this helped me quite a bit by keeping a 60 degree, a 60 degree, sorry, a 60% fan curve, just as constant 60%. Without this tweak, I had like 70 degrees Celsius after 10 minutes. And um, with this tweak, with the undervolting, I got to a, well, a thousand millivolts. For some reason in MSI Afterburner, it says like, it's 1050 instead of a thousand. Not sure if it's correct or not, but it worked perfectly that way. But anyways, after the underbolt, instead of 70 degrees, we got like 66, so four degrees less, four degrees Celsius less, which in my opinion is very, very usable. It's a very big advantage if you have an RX GPU and you're getting high temperatures. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the tutorial. I'll show you now a comparison with Hitman. So you can see the differences with undervolting and without it. You can even try and overclock a little bit after the undervolt. It might crash more easily because you're using less power, but you can try it out. I managed to get it to 1400 MHz, which is a small boost from 1366 with a thousand millivolts in in Wattman. But yeah, guys, highly recommended that you do this. RX 570, RX 580, uh, RX 590, even RX Vega 470, 480. It even made my core clock way more stable instead of having 1366 with some drops into the, I don't know, 1200 or 1300. I managed to get stable 1366. So with the same voltage, with lower voltage than stock, you get more constant core clock for some reason, at least in my case, it seems to be over bolted by default. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time.